creating conversations that you can share forward. Arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Carlton Eastlake. Oh, I, I am doing great. This is actually fun. <laughs> Well, you, but you know that you you do this for a living. Absolutely, well, it's, it's it's a passion. You know, creativity is the addiction. Do you see that as a writer as well? Uh yeah, yeah. I I, mean, I see. I uh, creating really is an addiction, and I think getting the material uh, out is is also. You know, a lot of writers are very bashful about interviewing or or publicizing their work. They just want to work. I thought, despite being in show business for decades, that that would be the sort of novelist I'd be. But I really have a passion to get out into the world what I've written, in part because it's about what I what I know. It's, it's lessons that I've learned the hard way that I hope people can learn the easy way just by reading my novels. Well, what happens is, is that the student is now the teacher, and now the teacher has got to activate it inside other imaginations. Yes. Exactly. That's almost a passage in the book, actually, as, well, as you probably know. I do know that, and I got to I got to tell you something. My wife is so addicted to this book, and I, I was I, I told her yesterday. I said I'm going to tell him that you can't put that book down because I mean it's, it's uh, even through the Johnny Depp trial, she's sitting there reading your book, Monkey Business, and I'm going, my God, this this is the kind of stuff that's going to be happening this summer. Oh, well, that, that is that is really really wonderful to know. I mean, and I hope other people feel that way. You know, it's funny to hear you talk about Johnny Depp, but very early in my career, I worked uh, on on a show called Booker, which was in parallel with Jump Street. Yeah. And, of course, we had a policy that we did not fly Johnny Depp with uh, other actors on the same flight at the Vancouver when he was unhappy. And days that he was unhappy, we didn't want him stirring other people up. And now we see it, you know, blown up into, <laughs> into life. See, that's that's the part of the industry that a lot of viewers and readers don't get to see. And and I, to me, that's the soul of the journey, is that, that, that those behind-the-scenes shots and experiences. Yeah, well, it, I, I'll tell you, I mean, it was very important because we had a number of shows. Every actor gets stressed, you know, because they are working incredible hours, and it is relentless, and they're always on screen. So we tried to keep Ken Wall and Richard Grieco and Johnny Depp on separate flights whenever we could, so they wouldn't look at each other and start to vibrate with, you know, with misery or, or even enthusiasm. Oh my God! I mean, in particular, we had three young, really intense leads: Richard Grieco and 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 Ken Wall and Johnny Depp, and we just would try not to fly them on the same plane, just so they they would, you know. Not have their concentration interrupted, and 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 if they had some bad day going on, that it would not infect other people. The the fact that you bring up Richard Grieco shot me back to Pasadena, California, where I met him for the very first time, and it was it was at a cheesecake factory, and I just walked up to him and said, "Yo," and he goes, "Hey, man," and he was so down to earth with real people. I mean, it's for you to be in that situation with these top name actors or people that were really starting to make a move on the industry, what what is that like for you? Well, I, I mean, you know, it, by the way, Richard Grieco was terrific to work with. He really, really was. And I, I still remember with fondness that we had a very nervous, brilliant, but a nervous actress who was having some issue on set. And, and I got a call from her, and she said, you know, I was really worried about this. So Richard said just to, get, to give you a call and talk it through. And it, that was like the nicest thing, you know, that he has ever done and because – it was very easy to resolve, but she was afraid to talk to the producers and at the same time was, you know, getting in trouble just with some aspect of the role or some aspect of the day's pages. And he calmed her down and also got me to make changes for her. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a little, however, it is a little like being a lion, a lion tamer or a bear tamer because so much depends on what you're capturing day to day, and it's so expensive to be filming that, at least as a young writer, you are a little bit concerned when you're around your stars that you keep them happy and they keep their concentration, and yet you don't let them run away with the project that you're responsible for. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not like being a fan, getting to know you know your fan favorites when you run into them somewhere. It's more cautious than yeah. that.
Yep. In monkey business, first of all, I would love to see the research of how many men are going to secretly read this book. Because in monkey business, William Fox gets locked into a box because he's he's got a fascination with Nicole. There's a lot of people in the broadcast industry and the entertainment industry that can probably relate with William Fox. And they want to find out what this dude is going to do about it. I was talking to a bookstore owner who got an advanced copy. Mm-hmm. And he said... I can't put this down. You know, this happened to me. Well, <laughs> See? that type of, you know, and, and, and I didn't understand it. I thought I was out of control. I thought I was going crazy. I didn't realize it was like normal. Uh, about 75% of people back when the psychologist who first coined the term limerence, when she <laughs> imprisoned her grad students in a room and made them take, you know, a survey, 75% admitted that they had been uh, really disturbed, really disabled by uh, a love relationship that was um, staring them, that was not reciprocated, and so plunging them into frantic despair. 75%. And, of course, it is the engine in traditional Broadway. You know, some enchanted evening, you'll see a stranger. Uh, uh, you know, I wonder what the king is doing tonight. He's scared and running away to Scotland tonight. Uh, it is, you know, I've often walked down the street before, but it's never felt now all of a sudden I'm several stories high. It is that, uh, that type of falling in love that I think the modern, very mm-hmm. modern age has become just even more embarrassed about talking. But people have always been embarrassed about talking about it, except when they see it on Broadway, except when they see it in a novel. We see it less in novels now. It is really important for people to understand because it drives so much of our behavior. Wouldn't you say that monkey business is oh. is about the mystery of love in the way that it's like you know because we don't understand sometimes how our hearts can go in a in a direction, but you you really kind of lay it out there for us to say, dude, it's okay. You you can move forward, but it's okay. See what's happening here to William. Yeah, uh, I mean it's exactly that. I mean. Uh, like all of our monkey impulses, as to say, like all of our <laughs> drives that we have inherited out of our monkey past, uh, it's a very powerful force that uh, our conscious, rational ability has to try and cope with and moderate and make productive and creative, not destructive. Um, so people really, really ought to understand it. I wish that a little bit of primate ethology, a little basic primate psychology, and certainly limerence, passionate love, was taught in high school as just part of the survival yep. course for life. I mean, I really do, and it's one reason I wrote the book. Are we going to see this on Netflix? Are we going to see this on Netflix or Amazon Prime? Because you know it's got that, that, first of all, it's got you behind it, <laughs> but more importantly, it's got that, that, that stamina <laughs> that's going to create water cooler conversation. You know, we might, and of course it is a look at the industry, and the same thing that it does about love, it does about power seeking in the workplace. You know, it also examines that. Those are the two monkey drives that's examined. Uh, we'll have to see. You know, at the moment, streaming is in a little trouble. They're, they're, they're cutting budgets. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do to actually make a profit. Uh, you know, that's been the big thing in Hollywood the past week. Um, so we'll see what happens. Oh, Carlton, I, I could talk to you all day. I love your stories. I know that we're going to get to meet many more times in the future because your writing is just through the roof unbelievable. And, and I, once again, I can't get my wife to put the dang book down. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> and and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm blaming you, man. <laughs> yeah, she may she may have things figured out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay, it's sir? Sort of a manual for women to figure men out. <laughs> <laughs> have a great day today. Oh, thank you, and you too. Bye bye.